G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, well, so, there was a bit of FUD going around uh, from Janet, Janet Yellen the other day talking about, you know, we need to have a look at, you know, specifically Bitcoin she mentioned and about it using for it being used as nefarious, uh, for nefarious means, uh, most specifically by terrorists uh, and things like that. Uh, and it caused a bit of an uproar and look, I was one of the ones as well. So this is a tweet I put out. Could some Janet Yellen FUD cause a correction? And look, we've had a correction. This may have played a part in it, along with other stuff. But I put here, the old guard trying to protect their walled garden that keeps the rich rich and the poor poor. That's the banking system and the current financial system that we have. You cannot stop progress. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies will succeed. Be remembered for the right reasons, not the wrong. Now, I specifically put her in the tweet, and I'm wondering if she read it. <laughs> Look, I'm sure she's probably got a million tweets out there, and I don't know if she read mine, but a very interesting story has come out. So, Janet Yellen, President Joe Biden's US Treasury Secretary nominee, seems to have balanced her statements about Bitcoin and crypto. After her previous negative rhetoric about the emerging technology, Janet Yellen acknowledges crypto's benefits. So in a written response to the US Senate Finance Committee on Thursday, uh, yesterday, Yellen stated that cryptocurrencies had benefits that needed to be explored. Yellen added that the emerging technology had the potential to improve the efficiency of the financial system. Uh, <laughs> It 100% will. It doesn't have the potential. It is absolutely going to do it. Uh, there is no doubt about it. And that's why they're moving towards it. And I think she probably got a number of people that probably, uh, you know, tweeted about her and got onto her about it. And she's quickly had to come out uh, and sort of, you know, clarify exactly what she meant. And I understand and agree. Any, you know, crypto transactions that are happening, you know, for terrorist organizations and fraud and all the rest of it, we need to be able to crack down on that, 100%. No guarantee, no, no doubt about it, I should say. But this is the absolute truth here. Uh, it's an emerging technology that doesn't have the potential. It will improve the efficiency of the financial system. It just doesn't need to be over-regulated and, you know, corrupted and, you know, basically made to preserve the old walled garden that I spoke about. That system's dead. Decentralizers here. Uh, you know, banks and that, they need to get their act together and they need to, you know, get into DeFi and that. I'm not saying just jump into any old project, but they now need to start looking after the people that make them rich and not just making themselves rich. And, you know, this whole dollar system that keeps us enslaved and all the rest of it, that is going to die. 100% no doubt about it. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen next week. But I would say within the next 10 to 20 years, I think the dollar will nearly be gone in all f sort of forms. There'll be some other monetary system. Uh, and again, at first, it'll be something that they will try and create that will be much the same as what it is now. But people are too clued on these days. They're onto it. They know that those systems don't work. If it's anything that can just continue to be printed into oblivion and will continue to make the rich rich and keep the poor poor, it won't last. I do think things like cryptocurrencies and that are the future uh, and banks and that will become almost, not non-existent, they will just severely have to change and they won't have this system that they have now where they've been able to line their own pockets and again, keep the rich rich and the poor poor. That is disappearing. But unfortunately for us, it's not going to happen, uh, happen overnight. It is going to be uh, a protracted prog progress that I think will take sort of 10 to 20 years uh, and again, I'm not saying Bitcoin is the answer. I think it's going to be part of the answer. But we have to have things uh, set up like this that, again, they work for everyone, not just the lucky few who are rich and can afford it. We need a system where everybody can benefit from it uh, and not just, you know, again, 90% of, you know, whatever profits can be made go to, you know, the rich and then, you know, the 10% that's left over gets divvied out to everyone else. That is dead and won't last. But I am glad that she's come out uh, and, you know, corrected what she said. Because I agree with the terrorism part, as I said. And, you know, any nefarious acts that are being done with any cryptocurrency, including Bitcoin, we need to get rid of that and stomp on it. But don't over-regulate it and ruin, uh, you know, 
it's not just an emerging technology it is a a defining moment in how finances will be handled into the future and we don't need someone to come in and again over regulate it and ruin it so again i'm glad and you know uh, I'm going to put it out there. I think she read my tweet and that's why she came out and did this. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the way I'm going to run. All right, now we've got some stuff over here. So it says here, this on-chain metric suggests Bitcoin price correction is unstoppable. Look, I'm not sure about that. I think we could have some further downside, absolutely, but it is definitely uh, will be stopped at some stage. So we've got to go down here. Bitcoin is trading sub 30,000. It's not anymore. It's up above 30,000. It's around 31. After a huge hurricane-like gust of wind swept across the currency market. Now, there was just a lot of FUD. It turns out that, <coughs> excuse me, the double spend was just FUD by BitMEX, uh, most likely so they could short the market uh, and make a whole lot of big returns. And then obviously stuff, you know, JP Morgan and, you know, other places and even, you know, Janet Yellen again, putting the stuff out, whether that was on purpose or not, uh, you know, who knows, but there's a lot of FUD out there and that is more what is um, to do with this at the moment than really anything because institutions and that, they're still buying it up like there's no tomorrow, so it can't be that bad. Now the flagship digital asset has been rejected at 38,000, giving way to losses that took a pit stop at 34,000. However, the bearish outlook grew stronger forcing BT to test former support at 30,000. And that's pretty much where it's bounced off, 30,000. So whether we go lower or not, who knows? But we're gonna to go to the chart soon and have a look at that. According to the spent out profit ratio, or the SOPR, an on-chain metric by Glassnode, the correction is bound to continue. Price action below 30,000 could bring the support at 28,000 on the test. Uh, while declines are likely to extend to $25,000 as predicted on Thursday. I don't know if it's going to get to 25. I'm not saying it can't, but I think that uh, is less likely. I, I think the 28, 27,000 is where it's going to find support. But we'll have to wait and see. Let's go over to the charts. All right, so this is the one I did the other day. As I said, I thought it would probably roll over a bit. And we might come down to around about 27,000, 28,000. Look what that marries up with. And I didn't have this here the other day when I did it. It just happens to line up. This is the 50-day moving average. You can see the wick. It came down and almost wicked off it per perfectly. And that's because we've got a bit of support here. Again, a little bit here and a little bit here. And again, some a little bit lower and some a little bit higher. But basically, this correction at the moment is Bitcoin just coming down and adjusting to the 50-day uh, moving average. So this is a perfectly healthy correction. This is not the end of the world. This isn't time to sell all your Bitcoin and panic and get out. <laughs> the complete opposite. I know it doesn't sound right, but this is the correction that needed to happen. You know, one of those things uh, that just sounds kind of ridiculous, but it is kind of true at the same time. Bitcoin just was on such a mad run and it was way above this 50-day moving average. Now we've come back and touched it. Now look, we could go lower. This yellow one down here, this is the 100 day moving average. It wouldn't be bearish if we came down and touched this. I think that's a bit low. I think it would be really hard at the moment for Bitcoin to touch that. I think it's gonna be quite a while before we see Bitcoin come down and touch the 100 or the 200 day moving average. There's just still too many organizations buying it up, but I don't think it's impossible to think that it might come down to somewhere around about here. I think it could come down to the $24,000, $25,000 range. I just don't know if that's possible because of the uh, bullish sentiment. There's a lot of FUD out there that's, you know, scaring people and new buyers generally. I haven't sold any Bitcoin. I sold uh, some of my alts uh, for profit and I've got it sitting on the side. And should Bitcoin go lower, I'll buy some more Bitcoin but I'm really more looking to put that money back into the alts. I can already buy the alts that I sold at profits for cheaper right now, but I'll just keep that money on the side because no matter what anyone says, the dollar is not dead yet. You know, if you've got everything inv invested in crypto, you know, awesome. Uh, you know, as long as you're in good projects, not financial advice, you're probably going to do well over the short term, but you can't buy dips if you don't have dollars. You need to have dollars. So... Just keep that in mind. I've got dollars on the side in case 
this does correct more than what I think and comes down to here. And as I've said before, uh, I miss this. So if Bitcoin doesn't come down here, I'm just going to leave it. I'm happy to have missed it. But if it comes down and touches the 50 day uh, moving average again, I'm going to put half my cash into Bitcoin. If it comes down and touches the 100 day moving average, I'm going to put half of what cash I have left uh, into Bitcoin. If it comes down and touches the 200 day moving average, really, if it just gets much below uh, the 100 day moving average, short of there being, again, something crazy, I'm going to dump everything I can into Bitcoin at these kind of prices because I know that is just a healthy correction. On a number of occasions in a bull market, Bitcoin has been known to come off and bounce almost perfectly off the 200 day moving average. I don't see that happening anytime soon, but if it was somewhere down here, that would be an absolute amazing buying opportunity in my personal opinion, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. And that is just simply based on history. So that's something that we need to keep in mind. So again, we'll see if this plays out and we just kind of travel slowly and maybe get down to here. Or was that the weekend sort of, you know, sell off that we have? Again, it usually starts somewhere Wednesday night Thursday and can happen right through to sort of Monday morning somewhere around there best time to buy Bitcoin is generally Monday sort of morning or after a weekend correction and the best time to sell it is sort of somewhere around Wednesday Wednesday night uh, here in Australia it'll be days out you know a day out in different places of the world because somewhere around Thursday through to Sunday there's a weekend correction generally Thursday Friday ish is where you see it mostly but again, that's not a golden rule, and that's for the traders. If you're out there and you want to do that, go for it. I generally just invest. Now, the reason I don't think it's going to get uh, too crazy is things like this. Crypto ETP market is up 95% to $35 billion since December. All right, that's only a month ago, and it's up 95%. There is nothing to worry about, ladies and gentlemen. The world is not coming to an end. Could Bitcoin go lower? Absolutely. I mean, we, again, quickly go back here. It could come down to the 200-day moving average, which is at $16,000. And as long as it bounced off there, that is just a healthy Bitcoin correction. And generally, when it comes down and you know bounces off the 200-day moving average, it sharply moves up quite quickly. I'm not saying it recovers all the gains, but it doesn't stay down here for long. It usually only the wicks come down and touch this and then it moves straight back up. So that's why I'm not overly bearish. Could it go lower? Absolutely, if it goes lower, uh, I'm gonna continue to buy. And really, only if we had a close below, excuse me, the 200 day moving average and a big one, not just because we've had clothes that have just kind of gone under it, uh, I wouldn't be worried. I would think this is just part of the normal cycle. All right. Something uh, else I found interesting was uh, this one. This is another reason why I'm still bullish on crypto. So Rick and Morty creator sells NFT art collection for over $1 million in Ether. That wouldn't happen if we were in a bull market. If he were to try and sell NFTs and we we're in a bear market, you know, he might get a thousand bucks, you know, or a couple of thousand bucks. He got a million dollars and I don't know if, uh, there we go. This is the kind of stuff that he's basically sold and people have bought this uh, for a million dollars worth of ether, not just this one, it's a collection. Again, in a bear market, people are gonna go, mate, I'll give you 50 bucks for it, maybe a thousand bucks. It's because we're in a bull market, people are happy to pay that kind of money because the price of this uh, will likely go down when crypto goes down in the next bear market. But then in the next bull market, I mean, this, you know, who knows what the prices of these could be. They will likely soar as well. They will likely always be based around how well crypto is doing. So again, another reason why I'm still super bullish. All right, an interesting story. So uh, Aave and Matic have now teamed up. So there's a bridge. All right, the first Aave friendly Ethereum to Matic bridge has opened for business, allowing users to port Aave's interest bearing A tokens back and forth between the DeFi protocol and faster, cheaper layer two network. The smart contract for the bridge was developed by Nick Mudge, lead Solidity developer of Avagotchi. It differs from previous Ethereum to layer two bridges as it interacts with the Aave protocol to keep track of interest bearing uh, paid on A tokens locked up on the Ethereum side of the bridge. So I am uh, bullish on Aave and I am bullish on Matic. Uh, again, Aave has performed unbelievably well. 
Uh, I've well over 10 x Ave, but I'm kicking myself because I only put in about 400 bucks. So I've turned 400 into 4,000 and that's amazing. But this is one of the projects that I put the least amount of money in because uh, I hadn't really done a whole lot of research at the time. Uh, I just heard a few people talk about Ave and I had $400 and I didn't know what to put it in. I went, all right, I'll just put it on Ave. Uh, and it is it was the old token though, so the old Ave, which is Lend. Uh, and yeah, I think I've got uh, 3,300 tokens uh, and that's now turned into the new Aave or I had to change it and every hundred of the old uh, Lend tokens turned into one Aave. So yeah, again, I turned three, $400 into $4,000. So not life changing. I'm not retiring or anything on that or anything like that. I'm not even remotely close. But look, I'm 10 times better off uh, than when I originally bought. So uh, super bullish on Aave. And again, they have a, a European uh, banking license, or not banking license, a financial license. I think they really are going to be a big part of uh, DeFi uh, in the future. I do believe CeFi, so centralized finance, will start uh, getting into this kind of stuff in the future. But again, please, this is all just my personal opinion, not financial advice. Uh, and I'm super bullish on Matic as well. I think they're a really good layer two solution and they are starting to come up with new projects. XDAI is another one that I'm really interested in, but it's just not available on the exchange that I use. So there's nothing much I can do. I mean, I can go searching in other exchanges, but uh, yeah, it's too hard to have a thousand accounts over a thousand different exchanges. I'll just use a couple of exchanges that I like. So, uh, but hopefully they get some uh, XDAI stake uh, and I will be investing in that should they do so. Now, another reason that I am super bullish on crypto still, and I think, you know, we're very early up, you know, I don't know when the peak is going to be. I'm going to say somewhere between August this year, and I think that's way too early, and possibly February next year, maybe even pushes out longer. It's so hard to know. But Grayscale. So is Grayscale about to unveil a link trust? So Chainlink. Grayscale Investments could be set to launch a raft of new products, including a Chainlink Trust, if freshly, unearthed, uh, in, if freshly unearthed filings are to be believed. According to the State of Delaware's Division of Corporations, someone set up a Grayscale Chainlink Trust on December 18th. So that's only like a month ago in 2020. On the same day, a Basic Attention Token Trust, Decentraland Trust, uh, Live Peer Trust and a Tezos Trust were also initiated. Before these communities get too excited, Grayscale Investments is yet to officially confirm it is behind the filings. Some reports have cast doubt, cast doubt on their legitimacy as the registered agent for the trust is listed as Delaware Trust Company and not Grayscale. However, the Delaware Trust Company is listed on the Grayscale website as one of its official service providers and the same details were used for the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust filing back in 2013. So I think that is massive bullish news for Chainlink. Uh, and again, it just leads to the fact that, you know, chances are nothing's guaranteed in life. Institutions are going to want to get in this. There is a real world use for Chainlink. Uh, you know, I'm not saying now's the best time to get into Chainlink, but it is on a dip. Uh, it, you know, if the cycles play out how they have before and the peak isn't till maybe December uh, this year, then who knows what kind of price Chainlink could go to. But if institutions start buying it up, yeah, the price could go extremely, extremely high. But look, no guarantees in life, so you know, don't go too crazy, but uh, I'm pretty sure Chainlink is down at the moment. Let's go and have a quick look. All right, we'll have to refresh this. This is a little bit old. So we're back under a trillion. So again, we could see some more sell-off. Who knows? Bitcoin dominance continues to drop though. All right, so yep, uh, we're going down uh, a little bit more. Or actually, I think that was 903, so maybe it's come up a little bit. Uh, I didn't pay enough attention. But Bitcoin dominance continues to drop. Now we're at 63.7%. ETH is growing. Uh, gas prices are just going crazy at the moment. They're absolutely ridiculous. That was 53 uh, just before, I'm pretty sure. So it's basically doubled in a matter of, you know, however. And that's because everyone's trying to get into, you know, all these things on Uniswap at the moment and DeFi stuff going all over the place. Uh, it really, yeah, layer two solutions can't come quick enough for uh, ETH. And, you know, if, if they don't happen, uh, you know, much sooner rather than later, uh, Ethereum, it just it won't be adopted uh, widely by 
the world until those things are fixed. And, you know, ETH, Ethereum need to take their time and make sure they get it right and all the rest of it. But, gee, you know, I'm not poor. I'm far from rich. You know, I'm still working. Uh, but 97 uh, Guay, I'm going to say that's probably 20-something dollars, if not more, maybe even $30, $40 uh, to do uh, an Ethereum transaction. You know, if, if you're doing a transaction of $5, you're paying, you know, nearly 10 times the amount in gas fees. No one can do that. All right, but anyway, moving on from that. All right, as we can see, there's a fair bit of red here. You know, we've been going backwards. It's not all doom and gloom. Some coins have done well, but mostly uh, they're not doing too well. So let's have a look. What has done well? All right, there we go. Curve Dow, 10%, so good for them, and they're up 120% for seven days. Uh, UMA, basic attention token. Again, maybe that's because of the news that... Um, you know, Grayscale are possibly opening in a trust. Uh, Kyber Network, finally, you know, getting some gains. You know, I held on to it. I still believe in Kyber Network. I like the fact that when you stake, you get paid in ETH. But, you know, the gas fees at the moment, I just, I, yeah, I can't afford to do it at the moment. Uh, and then, look, everything else, they're pretty small gains, though. 2% in 24 hours, 4. Really, that's the only one that's kind of okay. Now we're going to go to the hard part, the losses. All right, so these kind of hurt. 20%, you know, that starts to hurt a little bit. Hedera, Hashgraph, and things like that. And again, the graph, it pumps such a lot. So, of course, they're still up for seven days. So, it's not all bad news. But, I mean, look at Dash. Wow, I don't know what happened there. But that just completely uh, f <laughs> fell over a cliff right there. That uh, that really hurts. But, again, they're not the only one. There's a number of other coins, Bitcoin Cash, Sirecoin, that have really just kind of taken a tumble. And even over seven days. So, not all coins... Uh, basically do amazing in pumps you know the the better ones kind of do better and the ones that aren't so good don't do so good but look in saying that ethereum in my personal opinion is a great coin look at it it's not doing so well at the moment now last but not least the thing i want to do is talk about you know for new people if if you're unsure about cryptocurrencies you definitely need to do some research first and looking at the charts at the moment uh, is not great but if you're unsure about what to invest in, here is just some personal advice. Again, not financial advice. Nothing I say is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just someone who's been in the space a while. If you invest in the top 50 coins, you're generally probably going to be all right. Generally, probably going to be right. That's a little bit of an oxymoron there. But really, the coins in the top 50, most of them have been around for a while or they're a you know, somewhat new project that's still doing really well. They're on the up and up. It's once we start to move out of that, things aren't so great. But I mean, you know, like the graph, they weren't in the top 100. So they're moving their way into it and moving up. Same with Ren, likewise. So uh, uh, a number of coins here, they're, they're on the way up. So that's good. But what you want to do is keep an eye on a coin. Say you get into sushi. Perfect example. Well, not perfect example. But it just keeps dropping. Like you check on it every week. And sushi's at 50. Then it's at 57. There's an at 64. Then it's at 73. Then you're starting to go way down here, you know what I mean? And you're getting 91. And it just keeps getting lower and lower. You may, and again, the dollar value may still be sort of going up. It's not that it's the dollar value is going down it's just being outperformed by a whole lot of things that might be something for you to keep in mind and go you know what maybe i need to you know reevaluate uh whether this coin is really for me now again i'm not saying that means it gets you get out of it straight away but it's just a consideration because coins do drop out of the top 100 uh and then all of a sudden come firing back and you know you know rage right back in and go higher so it's not like they can't but for me uh, i don't invest in too many things outside of the top 50. it's not to say i don't invest in any but really most of the things i invest in are in the top 50 because they are the ones that are performing the best they've got the most liquidity and all the rest of it and they generally got good communities behind them but look, not everything. I mean, we had BitConnect back in 2017 and that was just a total scam. Uh, and that was, I can't remember what number it was, but it was bloody high. Uh, and everyone was getting into it. It was a full-blown Ponzi. And even the, the one coin, uh, you know, was quite high in here. So there are scams in there. And look, just because they're, you know, kind of in the top 50 doesn't mean they can't have bugs and faults or the rest of it. You know, rug pulls are... Uh, 
in projects that are in the top 50 are less likely, not impossible. But that is my personal uh, opinion. So you do with that what you like. But I try to keep, you know, the bulk of my uh, portfolio in coins that are in the top 50. Now, again, they don't have to be exactly in the top 50. I definitely have things that are outside of the top 50 sometimes. Like, I mean, at the moment, uh, I've got Kyber Network. I have that. Um, yeah, I don't have anything. Most of the other things that are in, I mean, there we go. I've got Engine. I have some Engine. Uh, what else? I had Algorand. I got out of that. And again, it just wasn't performing well enough. So uh, I moved on from it. And that's nothing against Algorand. It's just, you know, I, I'm out to, you know... <laughs> make you know profits uh and more regular profits doesn't mean i hate our grand doesn't mean i think they're not doing well enough uh their you know ceo is a very very smart guy who's been around for a long time but i just think the marketing probably needs to be improved because it's really about hype you know you need coins that have got big hype behind them uh to get the gains that doesn't mean they're fundamentally the most sound but doing well again block stack i got into block stack quite some time ago and i think they were well outside uh the top 100 at that stage and now they're into the top 100 so it's not that you can't find projects out of there but generally things that are sort of moving their way up people are buying into them that means the liquidity is getting more the project is probably going to do better no guarantees in life all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another Click the like button down below. Please click the uh, subscribe button, the bell and the uh, all button as well. That way you get notified of uh, my regular content that comes out. And I'm pretty much a daily content provider. Rarely do I ever miss a day, but there has been occasions. I've been on holidays or, you know, just work's got in the way. But I think I've only missed two and I've been going for uh, a number of months now. I'd love to know your thoughts on what you think I can do to improve the channel as well. Uh, I only want to get better at this. Uh, I'm far from, you know, one of the top YouTubers at the moment, uh, but I would like to be someday. Love to know what you think uh, I could do to improve. And if there's something you want me to have a look at, I can do some deep dives. They take a lot more time and a lot more effort, uh, but if I have the time, uh, I don't mind putting in the effort. Again, stay safe, be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment. I think we're all hurting just a little bit. And I'll see you next time.